Hey guys, so this video is going to be my absolute favorite beauty products of the year. Um, 2016 is literally days away. I can't even believe that. I hope that you guys had an amazing 2015. I had a really great 2015. It was full of lots of changes and transitions and um, just ended on in a way that I didn't expect it to end when we started the year. So, um, but anyway, all for the better, all for the good. Um, I'm really excited about next year. We have some really exciting things happening in our family next year. I am not having any more babies, um, but we are in the process of building a new home, which is really exciting for me, uh, for us, because um, it's just been something that I've wanted to do for a really long time. And we have literally been keeping an eye on the market for like two years, trying to find the perfect opportunity. Um, and we did. So we are in the process of building a house. So anyway, that's off the topic, but um, anyway, 2016, I'm very much looking forward to, um, but I did want to end the year with doing a video of my favorite beauty products for 2015. There we go. Let's wrap it back to what this video is about. Um, I, don't, I don't really do monthly favorites. I used to when I first started my channel. Um, when I first started my channel, you know, honestly, I was just kind of looking at like what other people did and I was trying to get an idea of what people wanted to see. And so I started off doing monthly favorites, but then what I found is that um, one, I was just feeling the need to like have stuff to talk about every month when I really didn't have things that I loved every month. And I just didn't want to be in that position where I was just talking about products because it was time to upload that video. You know what I'm saying? Um, I am not a beauty blogger that gets a lot of products sent to me at all. So I have to buy all of my product. Um, and I just can't buy that much product all the time to have monthly favorites. Um, but I do have yearly favorites. Um, and I'll do favorites throughout the year, of course, as I have them. But I did want to do a product. I did want to do a video on my favorite products for 2015 because I did discover some products products that I loved this year. I have products that I um, were new to me, whether they were new in 2015 or they were just new to me. Um, I was just going through my collection and I found products that I just fell in love with this year. Um, products that I had never tried before that I absolutely love now. And so I just wanted to share this with you guys. So anyway, I'm going to quit rambling. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first, let's start with skincare products. Um, and when I say skincare, I actually don't mean skincare, but I mean products for the skin. So foundations, um, I don't have concealers, but I do have a product that's kind of concealer related. So um, the first product, I have uh, two foundations and one BB cream. The first foundation that I fell in love with this year, and this is not a new product. This has been around for a very long time. It's the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. Um, I strayed away from this for a long, long time um, because it had the word luminous in it and I, you know, glowy skin is gorgeous and it sounds beautiful and it looks beautiful in photos, but I live in Texas and I want something that I don't have to worry about touching up throughout the day. So that's why I've always stayed away from glowy or dewy type foundations. I've always liked more of a full coverage matte finish or satin finish or velvety finish foundation. But this year I really found myself liking more dewy luminous foundations, foundations that just looked, make the skin look healthier and supple. Maybe it's because I'm getting older. I don't know. Um, um, but, um, and I don't mean that as an, I, what I mean is that, you know, as you get older, your skin changes and, um, skin foundations that make your skin look more supple and hydrated tend to look better on more mature skin. Um, that's what I meant by that comment. But anyway, I love this foundation. It's beautiful. It's very lightweight. It's not super dewy. Um, I do set it with a powder and I get a, the type of finish that I like, but I love it. My favorite way to use this foundation is to mix it with Studio Fix Fluid by MAC, which is probably one of my all-time favorite foundations, but uh, I am finding that it's a little more he on the heavy side for me these days, so I like to mix it with a foundation like the Armani uh, Silk Foundation to get the perfect coverage and finish that I like, but that is a foundation that I have absolutely fallen in love with this year. Okay, so the next foundation is the Makeup Forever um, Ultra HD and Visible stick cover foundation, I believe is what it's called. I have talked about this video. I've talked about this video. I've talked about this foundation in a video before. I think I did a first impression or review on that. I'll link that down below. But I love this foundation. Again, this is a foundation that surprised me because it's a stick foundation, and I never really met a stick foundation that I liked. I used to like this the MAC um, stick foundations, Studio, not Studio Tech something. Studio Stick, I think is what it was called. I don't even know if they still make those foundations. I don't know. But when I worked for MAC a long time ago, they did. And I uh, liked that. But um, anyway, off the subject, I love this foundation. It's very supple. It's very healthy looking on the skin. I do have to set this with a powder though. Um, the 
Luminous Silk, I, don't, I feel like it's an option for me. This one I do have to set with a powder. Um, it is a little too dewy for me without. Um, but I just love it. It's so easy to apply um, just a couple of stripes on the face and then blend it out with the foundation brush and it's absolutely beautiful. It gives great coverage and again, it just gives the skin a really, really, really healthy fill and finish. Okay, so the next product is a BB cream, and I've been using this longer than this year, but I have to talk about this because this is probably my one of my favorite products to put on my skin. Foundations, BB creams, tin moisturizer, like that whole category. If I had to pick one thing that every time I put on my skin, I'm just like, oh my God, why don't I wear this every single day? It is this guy right here. This is amazing. It's the Dior Snow uh, BB Cream. Um, it has an SPF of 50 and it's beautiful. I love it. I love it. I can't, I don't know what to, else to say about it. It just makes the skin look so pretty. It gives really great coverage for a BB cream. Um, yeah, I don't know why I don't wear this every day. I really don't understand. I do think that this is a little hard to find because I have recommended this a lot to friends and when they go to Nordstrom they don't see it and when they go to Sephora they don't see it um, so when you get online I think that's the best way to find this I don't know if it's a discontinued product or a limited edition product I've had it for a while I kind of just save it for special occasions because this guy is probably about a year and a half old um, and I don't wear it daily just because I love it and I like to save it for just I like to save it I don't want to, I don't want to run out so this guy is amazing and then the next skin product, and then we're going to move on to lips, is the uh, Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. I talked about this in a video a few videos back. Um, I picked this up a few months ago, and I love this. I add this um, to my concealer routine, so I put this on before I put my concealer on. And this basically works as a backlight for your concealer. I think I read that somewhere in a description, either on Sephora or Becca's website. And that's the perfect way to describe it. So it basically just brightens up the under eye. Um, you still want to put a concealer on top of it, but it cancels out any darkness. So if you have really dark circles and a concealer doesn't always do the trick, putting this down first and then putting your concealer on top is just going to help um, brighten that under eye area. It has a really subtle glow. It's a really creamy product. So when you put it on, the first time I applied this, I thought it was going to be, um, it was going to get creasy or cakey throughout the day or move around a lot because it's very creamy, but it really doesn't. Um, it's great. I do recommend applying this and blending it in with a beauty blender before you put it on your concealer. Like, don't just put this on and put your concealer and blend the two together. Put this on first, work it into the skin, put the concealer on on top of that. Love it. Lip products. I have one, two, three lip products to talk about. Uh, the first is the Marc Jacobs lip glosses. They are the enamored high shine lip lacquers. I have two shades. They're both pretty sheer. One is called Moon Glow and then one is, is called French Tickler. They're both very sheer like nude shades. Honestly, all these, all of the shades are very sheer. So even if you get like a really um, bold one, it's going to be a lot more sheer than it looks. But these are great. They're super, super glossy. I just love the packaging. I love the smell. It has like a pepperminty kind of smell to it. It smells so good, but they are just so, so glossy. They give the look of just really high shine, high gloss, like wet, dripping lips. They are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, this one does not have any shimmer to it. This is the uh, Moon Glow, does not have any shimmer. The French Tickler does, but it's really, really refined. It's actually a really pretty like purple lessened, did I just make that up? Purple lessened refined glitter. Um, it's not, I hate to even use the word glitter because it's not glitter. It's really refined shimmer particles. It's very, very, very pretty. Okay, the next product is by Bite Beauty. Um, I think these are actually two different. So one is a high pigment pencil, though they're both high pigment pencils. Okay. This I got in a, I think I got this in a Sephora play box last month. Um, this is in the shade rhubarb. And this is the one, the first one I picked up, it's called Bouquet, but I love these. They're like lip crayons. They're super hydrating, super pigmented. Um, I love Bite Beauty lip products. If you have not checked out Bite Beauty lip products, I would check them out. Um, any product from theirs that I've tried, I love. This one in particular, Bouquet, is my favorite. I have it on right now. And then I have something on top of it. I actually have two things on top of it, so it's not really this color, but um, they just are great. They're great to wear by themselves. They're great to wear under a gloss. They're great to line your lips. Very versatile and phenomenal products by, by Beauty. 
one. Okay, so I hesitated buying Tom Ford forever because it is so expensive. I think this lipstick was like $52 or $50. It was at least $50, which I think is crazy for a lipstick. Crazy. Um, but one day I was feeling saucy at Nordstrom and I walked by the counter and it's just so beautiful that I splurged. I think I'd had two glasses of wine with lunch. But anyway, I love it. Um, I decided to keep it and I actually have not bought any more. I want to buy some more. They actually have mini ones now. I was at Nordstrom yesterday and they have like smaller ones and they're $35. So even though they're mini lipsticks and they're still pricey, I don't ever go through a full tube of lipsticks. So even though the small ones, I feel like that's going to be plenty of enough. But anyway, this shade is called Pink Teas and they are so pigmented, so pigmented. I have to say, I, I hate to say that it's worth the $52 or whatever it was, $50, but it kind of was. Like when I wear this, I just feel very expensive. Does that sound really bad? Um, but it comes with a pretty TF stamp on the lipstick bullet, which is now gone. Uh, but yeah, they're just a really great quality of lipsticks. This is a... Um, I think this is a matte. It doesn't say on here. Yes, it does. It's a matte. Um, they have different formulas. So they have sheer ones. I would never spend $50 on a sheer lipstick. I just wouldn't do it. Um, but any of the really pigmented ones, I would, if you ever want to treat yourself to something very luxurious and high-end, recommend this. Okay, so let's talk about eyes. I've got several eye products here. Um, so I'm going to start with, um, in no particular order, I'm going to start with Marc Jacobs palettes. The Marc Jacobs uh, cosmetic line has a few eyeshadow palettes. This is my favorite. It's the 206, the Lolita. I have another one. I think it's called the Lover. Um, and they're both really good quality. They're very consistent in the quality of the shadows. They're all great. But this is my favorite color combination. It's a very good neutral eyeshadow palette. It has some shimmers and some mattes. I don't really know what else to say about this other than the quality is great and the shade range is great. So, um, and the packaging is great. Again, this is a high-end item. I think this was $59, um, but not crazy. I mean, I feel like it's reasonable, right? Makeup Forever. Makeup Forever has this palette out right now and I love it. I almost didn't buy it and I don't know why, just because it's neutral and shimmer and I have tons of that already, but I decided to and I'm so glad that I did because it is probably my favorite eyeshadow palette of the moment right now. This is the Artist 9 um, Artist Nine Shadow Palette. They have two of these and you can't, you won't get them mistaken because this one's neutral and the other one has really bright, bold colors in it. Um, but I just love this shade range. They're all shimmery, there's no mattes to this, but they're still very wearable. They're not really glittery or metallic or foiled necessarily. They're very like refined shimmer, almost like a sh it's more intense than a sheen on the eyes, but it's not like a foiled eyeshadow or a glittery, frosty eyeshadow. There's not any fallout with these eyeshadows. My favorite one is this center one right here, and then I also like this one a lot too. Uh, but yeah, like I'll even wear this as a highlight on the cheek with a really soft, fluffy brush. So they're not that intense, but they are. Does that make sense? Like, they're not that intense, but that's not a bad thing. They're beautiful. They're perfect. They're beautiful. They just sit on the skin really nicely. Um, I love it. Yeah, I just love this palette. Foiled eyeshadows. Let's talk about foiled eyeshadows. Makeup Geek, I think she came out with her foiled eyeshadows this year. I want to say it was this year. Maybe it's not. I lose track of time. But her foiled eyeshadows, her eyeshadows period, actually. That talk, that's I'm going to talk about Makeup Geek eyeshadows in general. Um, so this is a palette that has some foiled. These are all foiled here. Um, that one's foiled. These two are not. And then this one is not. This is Latte, and this is like my favorite transition shade. It's by Makeup Geek. Um, if you have not tried her eyeshadows, you must. They are amazing. They are probably the best eyeshadows I have ever worn, and I worked at MAC for years. Better than MAC, um, cheaper than MAC. They're actually like drugstore pricing. So um, you have to order them online. That's the only hiccup is that you can't go into like Sephora and order them. But they are amazing. The foiled eyeshadows are extremely pigmented. If you are watch YouTube, then you are familiar with these already. If you don't, then you must check them out. Um, they're like, they almost feel creamy, but they're powdery. Super high shine, high color, just gorgeous. Um, I want to get the full collection of her, of her um, foiled eyeshadows, but these are amazing. They come in a pan, and I think they also come in a pot. I would recommend getting the pan and just buying a Z palette. You can buy them off her website as well. Um, and then, like I said, Latte is a really great crease transition shade. This is my favorite of the year. Okay, one more eyeshadow product, and then we'll move right along. ColourPop. Oh my gosh. So I am so thankful that a subscriber sent me this last year. I want to say it was last year. Again, 
Anyway, I fell in love with these this year. Um, ColourPop eyeshadows, $5 an eyeshadow, and they are amazing. These two feel really creamy. Um, they are highly shimmery and metallic and highly pigmented. They are gorgeous. Um, I have five shades. She sent me three and I ordered two shades of my own and I want to order some more. Um, but also their lippy products are really great. I didn't grab their lippy sticks. Why did I not grab their lippy sticks? Lippy sticks are great. Um, I have not tried a product from ColourPop that I have not loved. And I think for the majority, their products are all within the $5 range. So if you are not familiar with ColourPop, I recommend watching the rest of this video. Don't go anywhere yet. Go over to ColourPop and it is spelled C-O-L-O-U-R-P-O-P. -O -O um, and check them out because they are amazing. Um, okay, so lashes. So I had lash extensions for most of this year. Um, no, maybe not. I had it for about half the year. Anyway, I um, removed my lash extensions and I go back and forth. Like I love lash extensions, but um, for just a few other reasons, I just decided to give my lashes a little break from them for a while. Uh, it was really hard because my natural lashes are very short, very thin, very straight. They're pretty much every negative that you would want in a lash. Like they're everything you want your lashes to be, mine are the opposite. Um, so I went from having these gorgeous, beautiful, thick lash extensions to having like, and it was, it was really sad actually. Um, so I was trying so many products out there to try and help my natural lashes look better. I mean, mascara, plumpers, growth serums, all of that stuff. What I found, my two lash products that I absolutely love is the Dior Maximizer Lash Plumping Serum. So I have to put this on before I put mascara on, period. If I don't, my mascara, my lashes just look so sad. This helps my natural lashes look like something worth smiling about, maybe? Is that one? Yeah, something worth smiling about. <laughs> I'm so silly and dramatic. We're just talking about eyelashes here. But um, the next is by MAC, and it's Upward Lash Mascara. So I love this. I bought the Dior, and then I bought the Over Curl Mascara with it. And then I bought this guy here, the, the other Dior, whatever. What is this called? Anyway, meh. I was very disappointed with this mascara. Very disappointed. Um, and then I got this at MAC. I was just standing at the counter and it was there and I tend to buy things that are in front of me at the last minute and I just grabbed it with no expectation at all. Never heard anything about this. And this stuff is awesome. I love it. It's a very thickening mascara. So, um, and it's lengthening, but really I think it's thickening is its quality. I like the brush. It's really short and kind of stubby. Um, and it's not like real fluffy. Uh, it's just got little tiny grooves to it, uh, but it really just grabs each lash and coats it, and I, I love it. It's a good mascara. Check it out. Okay, I just have one, two, three, four products left. Um, okay, Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. Let's talk about this. I had wanted to get this for so long, and I did not because I have so many setting powders, so many loose, invisible whatever powders. Finally, I bit the bullet and I bought it. Not that it's super expensive, but it's, you know, I think it's like $30 or just $25 to $30. And it's kind of a small container. It's not as large as the others, but I love this. It is so nice and sheer and it's perfect for setting the concealer. If you don't want a really intense highlight, you just want to set your concealer and give a subtle brightening effect. It's great if you have more mature skin and wrinkles under the eyes or fine lines. Sometimes when you have texture under the texture on the skin, the more powder product that you put on it, the heavier powder product you put on it, the more intensified and magnifying that texture looks. So basically what I'm trying to say is if you have fine lines or wrinkles or scarring or whatever on your skin, don't pack a lot of heavy powder on top of it because it makes it look worse. You want to find powder that is very sheer, very lightweight. This guy is awesome for that. Um, love it. Okay. Another highlighting powder, and this is, I wouldn't say it's heavy, but it's not as lightweight as the Laura Mercier. It is the Marc Jacobs um, Contouring and Highlight Palette. Uh, I think this one is just called 40 Mirage Filter. Um, I've used this in lots of videos. I really, really like it. The um, It's just more silky than the Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, Banana Powder and her contour shades. This is very, very silky. Um, it does have some fallout. Like when you get your brush, you'll see that it has a lot of, like it's kind of messy and dusty, but I don't, I don't, I don't mind it. It's very lightweight and silky, if that makes sense. It's a lot more brightening than the Laura Mercier. So this is going to give you more of a made up 
look than the Laura Mercier. The Laura Mercier is going to look more natural, um, but this is really pretty. Every time I'm going out and doing makeup and I want to wear lashes and contour and, you know, have more dramatic drama going on, I will reach for this guy. I love it. Okay, moving right along, blush. I had to pick a blush product because I hadn't, um, and I have to say that this Bobbi Brown palette it is called Calypso Cheek Palette. It has three blushes in it, Pretty Coral, Calypso, and Coral Sugar. Um, they also, he also, he, he, what is wrong with me? She also has a pink um, blush palette similar to this that I have, but I really like the coral one a lot because it has a pink here, it has a shimmery like peach, and then it has a matte peach. Um, but I'm, I love this blush. It's just a really great go-to blush palette to have in your collection. Last is fragrance. Chelsea turned me on to this. I didn't wear perfume for the longest time because I have little babies and I am really paranoid when I have a tiny little babies and I don't want to have anything that irritates their skin. So I, um, like the first year of my kid's life, I never wore perfume because you're holding them the whole time. And if you have this heavy fragrance on and then it gets on their skin and they have a breakout or a rash, it's horrible. So I didn't wear perfume for the longest time. Um, so when my oldest, my oldest, my youngest daughter turned one, after one I was looking for a good fragrance to wear and um, I am so picky when it comes to fragrance like so picky I feel like I smell things on certain on people and then I smell it in Sephora and it does not smell the same or it doesn't smell the same on me this Chelsea walked by me one day and I was just like oh my god what do you have on like come here and let me smell you it just smells so good on her and um so I went and picked it up and I love it it smells amazing it's the Givenchy play perfume um I don't know what to say about it I'm not great at describing perfumes like I don't know how to describe them but it just smells like like sexy and powerful to me like I feel like it smells different than anything else I've ever smelled that's the best way to describe it I feel like so many of the fragrances smell so similar um, and this one doesn't. This one smells like sexy and womanly and I just love it. So that's it guys. Those are my favorite products for this year. Um, let me know what yours are because I need to, uh, you know, learn about other products and, and see what else is out there. So, um, in the comment section below, will you tell me what your favorite products are for this year? If I did mention something that you love, let me know that too. Um, thank you guys for supporting me and supporting my channel this year. I'm really excited about next year and I hope you guys have a happy and a very safe new year and I hope you had a Merry Christmas. Thank you guys. Bye. Hey, don't you think I can see that you've been looking at me, that you've been staring at me?